Our project is an autonomous low-level order picker solution. Low-level order pickers play a crucial role in the logistical chain between distribution centres and retail outlets. Warehousing is a high-risk occupation. The transport, postal and warehousing category consistently records the highest number of fatalities in Australia. Our environment emulates a distribution centre for a major supermarket. The core functionality of the system involves the ability of the picker to drive to a series of locations and pick the desired number of boxes from the appropriate pallets. Upon completing the order, the picker will drive to the staging area where it will be unloaded before returning to the ready position. We have used a doughbot with a suction cap gripper as the end effector, mounted on a turtle bot. A custom-built stereo camera is used to locate a pose for the centre of the boxes, and the doughbot is used to pick and place the boxes, while the turtle bot provides mobility and localization capabilities. To autonomously navigate its environment, the robot must be able to localise itself within its environment, plan a path between its current position and its goal position, and track its position in the environment as it moves to this desired pose. To localise, the robot requires a map of its environment. We generate an occupancy grid map of the environment by remotely driving the uh, robot around its environment while running a, sl a ROS SLAM package and collecting the LiDAR and robot pose data. To estimate its pose in the environment, the robot uses dead reckoning. Dead reckoning is a method of relative pose estimation which utilises wheel encoders in conjunction with inertial information from an IMU. This relative position is then compared with LiDAR data to determine the robot's distance to obstacles in the environment as it navigates. The generated map and estimated pose of the robot are used to implement adaptive Monte Carlo localization, which is a probabilistic method for determining the robot's location in the environment. To move from its current position to its goal position, the robot uses a dynamic window approach algorithm, which is an algorithm that allows the robot to plan a path between two poses while avoiding obstacles in the environment. A ROS service call containing a goal pose is initiated by a remote PC via MATLAB. The robot receives this service call and navigates to this goal pose. The robot can then return a message to the client running in MATLAB on the remote PC once it has reached the desired pose. To obtain a pose for the boxes to be picked, we're using a stereo camera created using two parallel webcams. We know the distance from the right camera to the left. This is known as the baseline. Using OpenCV, we can detect the centre of the boxes by employing image processing techniques. The local coordinates of the boxes' centres will vary slightly on one axis between the two cameras due to the baseline distance. This distance is known as the pixel disparity. Since the two cameras are parallel, there is a proportional relationship between the depth and the pixel disparity. There is also a relationship between the depth and the pixels per millimetre that the object is shifted along the X and Y axes allowing us to accurately determine the pose of each box. The raw data from the two cameras is streamed to an external server via the USB CAM ROS package where it's processed. The pose is calculated upon receiving a ROS service request. The Dibot robotic arm manipulator is controlled from the Peter Cox robotics toolbox. This involves creating two simulated robotics toolbox models based on the DH parameters of the Dibot. One model is for the visual simulation and the other is used for controlling the movement of the actual dubot. The transform of the end effector can be calculated by performing forward kinematics on the visual simulated robotics toolbox model when the end effector is kept in a vertical orientation as calculated based on the second and third joint angles. The next transform that the dubot needs to adopt to move, move the end effector towards the transform of the box to be picked is calculated with inverse kinematics performed on the robotics toolbox model of which is used for controlling the movements of the actual dubot. On the mobile base, we have an Intel Joule running Ubuntu with ROS Kinetic. The dobot, turtlebot and cameras are all connected to the Joule. The Joule is running the turtlebot packages, however, the dobot arm is controlled from another device. The raw camera feed is streamed using ROS via a Wi-Fi router and is processed on an off-board server. When the dobot arm is in position, a request is sent, at which point the camera server responds with a message containing the pose of the closest box to be picked relative to the end effector. 
Safety is a major consideration when robots and humans are working in close proximity. To address this, we have incorporated a number of safety measures to allow our robot to safely work alongside humans. Located on the perimeter of the warehouse environment is an emergency stop button and light curtain. If the emergency stop button or light curtain is triggered, the control center is notified and the robot will immediately stop and will wait until the hazard has cleared. To prevent collisions, the mobile base has a 360 degree lidar mounted on its second layer which scans the area in front of and behind the robot for hazards. If a hazard is detected within a certain range of the robot, the robot will immediately stop and send an alert to the control center. It will not move until it is safe to do so.